Hello everyone and welcome back to another instalment of our Portuguese barn conversion series. It's absolutely beautiful weather again here in central Portugal and we're raring to go and today we're going to try and finish all of the framing on the mezzanine. I've also got an update for you on Gingy Bear. A lot of you have been very concerned with her and after she was doing so well unfortunately there was a bit of a change in her recovery but I'll let you know more about that in a bit. We're the Indie Project, B and Theo, and we've been living and travelling the world in vans for the past six years. We're currently renovating an abandoned stone barn in Portugal to turn into a beautiful tiny home for us and our cats, Gingy Bear and Fernando. Follow our journey from the very beginning as we document the whole process of creating an off-grid home. Good morning, guys. Excuse me, mate, I'm trying to vlog. Good morning everyone, today is a good day, the sun is shining, I'm raring to go, come on, I'm raring to go, I'm ready to work on the mezzanine again, hopefully today we are going to get even more done on the mezzanine and we're going to figure out where our hatch and our ladder is going to go. on the front doorstep. Dilly dallying. Dilly dallying around and it's because it's such a beautiful day and we're about to go inside for most of the day in a dark barn. <laughs> so <laughs> I can't wait to get them Vlux windows fitted. And also, we've had our first accident of the day. I've now got a limp tape measure, but luckily we got a backup because that isn't really gonna work very well. No, I blame Fernando. But yeah, I got my notebook, well B's notebook, because she's very organised and she's written down all the dimensions. <laughs> and what we've done is we've just made two sticks cut to size and I'll show you why. These drumsticks that we made, they're spacer sticks, so we can get these perfectly spaced all the way along so it's really pleasing to the eye. And we can rectify the ones that Theo didn't put in <laughs> totally perfectly. But they're not screwed down yet so it's all good like we had a long day and um, this is what these are for we need to measure it all the roof is at 400 centers these are at 400 centers so what you get is this really pleasing look that the joists on the roof going that way the mezzanine beams are going this way and it's just it's gorgeous it just looks gorgeous it does look lovely i'm really looking forward to getting them totally fixed in place forever exactly we can screw these in now but we need to have a tough discussion right now we about do. where the sladder's gonna go. We've been putting this off for so long, so let's get to it. So we have changed our mind quite a few times as to where we want the hatch to go for our ladder, but today is the day, and I'm gonna take you up, up into the mezzanine. I was gonna say upstairs, there's no actual stairs yet. I'll take you up there and show you what we need to figure out before we fully commit to where this hole is gonna go. So unfortunately, we think that we're going to have to change the orientation of our bed. Originally, we were going to have it long ways. So we had some space this side and this side to have like a little bedside table, a few little candles, little lamp, set a real vibe. And We can I'd, still have that, just the other way. We can still have that. <laughs> <laughs> so... Our bed is like... Our bed is now going to be just slabs of rock, no comfortable <laughs> candles or yeah. any of that kind of stuff, no bedside tables. We are importing flat pieces of granite up here and we're <laughs> going to lie on that. So our bed's 190 by 135 roughly. Uh, that's the mattress. So 190 would bring us up to here and our hatch is probably going to start here because what we're thinking is you want to enter the mezzanine in, in, the, highest point. in the highest point or yeah. near the highest point. So that's going to be problematic that I might just slide down the hatch while I'm sleeping. <laughs> it's not funny, but it's <laughs> We don't want that. And we're going to have a really nice uh, banister. Not a banister, what would you call it? Would it would be a banister railing. I a don't nice, know. A nice chestnut railing along Protective here. Protective sticks so we don't fly off. <laughs> so we don't roll off. One, three, five is literally from this beam to this beam. So it doesn't leave us much. What, 135? Sorry, 190, oh, 190. We're so, about to freak out then. So, so what we're thinking is if we have our bed this way, 
So our heads go here. Our heads go here. And our feet go here. Exactly. Because initially our heads were going to go here and our feet were going to go here. And 135 from this beam, that's where the plaster will come to. 135 brings us to like here. Oh, so we've got so loads room. of room. Yeah. And that just makes so much more sense up here because. And you don't need a bedside table, it's me that needs one. Exactly. So I'll have to like <laughs> crawl over you if I want to get get down in the night, which is going to be. I don't often have to go for a wee in the night, but. You are getting older. And, you if know. I do, it's going to be an experience trying to find my, find my way down the sladder. <laughs> yeah. You can but, always go out the window. Yeah, out the Velux. <laughs> so just. Open it up here. <laughs> I might need to get some stilts. <laughs> but yeah, I think we've figured out the bed situation. Now we've got to figure out where the actual hatch is going to go. And uh, this is the ridge beam. This is the center of the building. And I think this is the nearest beam to the center that we're probably yeah. going to have to cut in half and make some sort of area. And you might be asking, why are you going for a hatch? You're losing space in the mezzanine. We'd rather lose space, a little bit of space in the mezzanine, the place that is just for sleeping and a little bit of storage, than to encroach on our living area that we're gonna be spending all of our time in downstairs. And I think that makes sense. Yeah, I agree. Everything that we just said, ignore it. We're totally wrong. <laughs> We've changed our mind. <laughs> this is the reality of building your own house. Like I said before, I went up there we keep changing our minds, but we've made a decision and we're sticking to it. You've got to admit, I put together a really convincing plan of the hatch and my arguments for it. And I've gone full circle and completely changed my mind. A complete U-turn. <laughs> <laughs> and the location of the new ladder is so much better. Let me show you over here where it was going to go. So what I was going to do is cut one of these beams in half and build a frame so that we could pop up in the middle. But we were like, okay, <laughs> Why? if we pop up in the middle, that's great, but then we lose loads of space on the mezzanine. I, I find it so odd how I've just given an argument for one and now I'm completely on the other side. <laughs> but something just switched in our minds and we're like, this is way better. But the cons were, like, I, I'm gonna have to build a banister around that because the bed is literally next to it. I'm gonna, like, I know we joked Theo about it. Theo is six foot three as well, so he will be hanging off the end I'm of our bed. I'm six foot three. I'm going to hang off the end of the bed. <laughs> That's if I don't kill myself rolling through the hatch. <laughs> it's just a nightmare. And then if we have to build an actual hatch, so it's more like a loft, like opening. If we built a hatch, then it'll be like, okay, Annoying. in the night or whenever you want to go up, you got to pop this hatch. Like, how often do you want to go in your loft? It's, it's never fun going in your loft, is it? And we don't want this to be an annoying experience. It's our home. We want it to be like flowy and nice and just really well thought out. So we scrapped the hatch. It's going here. <laughs> How cool is this? Like space saving location. <laughs> Over here, we would have had a, a big ladder going up here, which would have kind of like been right in the middle of the mezzanine. Yeah, because our sofa was going to be here. Our sofa was going to be here. And then we didn't know, really know what we could do with this because there'll be a ladder there. We've lost all of the space under the ladder as we well wanted, as the space on the mezzanine. We wanted our sofa here so you could see out of the glass door because exactly. it's such a lovely view. Wood burner is going to be there. So it'd be nice to have an option to have a sofa where you're facing the wood burner and also a sofa facing out of the window so you're looking out the massive great window we're going to have in the door this location is a winner like it takes up no room whatsoever it's right by the wall it's got a nice i love having this ladder we can still have our bed this way as well like long ways which is better thanks to front runner for sending us this ladder because it's been amazing like for this whole like building the bar and this has been amazing it's actually our van ladder because it collapses down to pretty much nothing but how good is this we can actually put an actual ladder there and see the angle that we like i'd like to just take a pause from today's activities to say a big thank you to squarespace who have sponsored today's video now if you don't know what squarespace is it's a fantastic online platform where you can build and design your very own website without any experience whatsoever and that's one of the things that i really love about squarespace we have our website with them. 
and we completely designed the whole thing and have full access to it which is fantastic because there's hundreds of different templates to choose from they're all completely customizable so you can make them perfect for you there's drag and drop features it's very easy to use and I really like the fact that we have our blog on there our shop on there we can host our podcast through Squarespace there's lots of really fantastic features and if you want to try out Squarespace and see whether it works for you have a 14 day free trial by clicking the link in our description or head to squarespace.com forward slash indie project and you can also get 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain so check it out build your own website and have fun in the process we're saving so much space having a ladder here and it's a really nice angle actually it's not too uh, shallow it's not too steep I'm going to try and go up it because I know I give convincing arguments and then I might change my mind. But I think it's going to work. I think that's going to be really good. Also, the door can open up and there's plenty of space. The door doesn't even open up to this ladder. So it's perfect. Go on, go up the ladder. Nothing else was going to happen in this space. No. We've got all of this space underneath there. I'm going to have a sofa here, sofa there. I'm actually hyped. It's also less work as well because I don't have to make a frame. So yeah, if I go up here... Obviously the ladder's going to be connected as well to the mezzanine so it will be secure because right now it's a smidge sketchy. So right now I've still got plenty of room, which is good. It means that we can have our bed and we can have a walkway all the way around our bed so I don't have to climb over you every time that I want to go for a week. <laughs> but yeah, look at this. Straight up, and there we go. I can just walk into the middle, and it's perfect. I don't see a problem with that at all. No, I think we should just commit and just go with that. A little bit of bending here going up the ladder means we save so much floor space Look on the ground floor down here. and so much space on the mezzanine. It's brilliant. I'm so happy we just took our time. It's really important sometimes to just say, Okay, stop the work and let's just go through a few couple ideas of how it might be improved and this is way better. This is another perspective of the amount of space we've got. Where I'm standing right now is the kitchen. Where Theo is sitting is just free space that we now have. <laughs> and it, it looks great. Look at the size of you compared... <laughs> There's a lot of room going on in here. I haven't stood from this angle for a really long time actually. It's exciting. to the cushion oh, oh my gosh this cat fernando this is going to be your new bedroom <laughs> okay. i know you're a cat and you've got nine lives but i'd rather you just kept them in mind smell the rat oh probably yeah because the, there's rat droppings in a hole over that side Yeah, because there's the big hole there where mm. they come in and out we need to fill that up look he's on his way i found the rat's nest <laughs> <laughs> you gone past it mate back a bit brave brave <laughs> cat so what i'm doing with these beams is i've got a thick drill bit a really wide one and I'm creating my own kind of pocket holes so that the screws sit below the surface of the wood so when we screw the floorboards on they don't get in the way. Nice and flush basically. Nice yeah. and flush well yeah exactly countersinking them. What I really like about these joists 
is they're so substantial. It's pretty much overkill the whole size of this, <laughs> but it doesn't bounce at all. There's no bounce, there's no flex. So once the floorboards go up, it'll feel like you're on an actual second story instead of just like on some flimsy mezzanine. This is like, it's a tank. And this is what it looks like from up here. It's gonna be so nice when we get the tongue and groove flooring on. The floorboards will just make it. And now we're not having a hatch in the middle. It just feels so roomy up here. It's brilliant. And also we're gonna have our Velux window one there and one over there but this one is designed to give us lovely light on the mezzanine so we can sit in bed and look out of that window which will be really really cool and here's the other side and i've actually left the two end beams unscrewed so i can take them out because these walls are going to be plastered so the plaster is quite thick and i don't know exactly where to put these so once it's been plastered I can just put these beams back in right up against the plaster for a nice smooth finish. What's also really cool is I can stand up fully on our mezzanine without having to bend my head or my neck. It's, it's really nice. It makes a massive difference. Even though this is just a bedroom, it's nice that I can stand up here either side of the ridge beam. B can walk around like normal. I'm very jealous of that. Now we're done with our inside work. We can be outside and enjoy the rest of the sunny day with some more work. I'm really happy that we sorted out the ladder situation in the barn. We've been thinking and scratching our heads on what we're going to do with that for a long time. And it's nice to have finally made a decision. And I wasn't thinking that I was going to be able to do any work outside today in the sun. I thought I was going to be locked inside all day working on the mezzanine. But now that's completed, we can crack on with other odd jobs before the sun goes down. So I'm going to paint the window frame. Here goes the first stroke. Wow, that looks good. Oh, this stuff really brings out the grain. I'm not critiquing you, but you do have a tendency to put a bit too much on, so make sure you do spread it out nicely. I get excited. <laughs> The frame is done and it's so nice to have a quick job that takes only a couple minutes to complete. And how nice has that grain come out? It's proper popping. Really does work a treat. If you guys are interested in getting the same stains and paints that we use and you're in Portugal, really highly recommend a store called Sin, C-I-N. They have one in Castelo Branco and it sells really high quality products. The paints, the stains, the brushes, the rollers, they're all really good. So definitely recommend you check that place out because yeah, for our project, it's worked wonders. So you can probably hear Theo in the background right now. He's just about to go off on his bike because we've been working our butts off the past few weeks and it's important to make sure that you have time to do things that you enjoy as well as doing the house conversion at the same time. So he's gonna go off on his bike now and I'm gonna read a book. <laughs> Park the bike up here for a minute and I'll show you about. This is not a bad place to have on your doorstep, is it? Beautiful forests. They're all like eucalyptus plantations and they're far enough away that they're not gonna cause us a problem, but it's one big playground. And that's actually the fourth time that I've ever rode a motorbike. 
or a dirt bike or anything like that on two wheels so I'm still learning obviously I've got a lot to learn I feel like I got to grips with the gears pretty quickly but there's still tons to learn and I'm absolutely loving it just look at this place to be here at sunset and just come out here and have this as your playground when you've been working hard because we've been absolutely smashing the building non-stop all day every day and it's just nice to do something a little bit different and let off some steam So here's one of the logging trucks that they use to get rid of this pine and eucalyptus and I always wondered what vehicles they use because I've not seen them before. I always see that they've done logging and I see normal 4x4s but not something like this and this makes sense. Eight wheels, absolute beast, massive tyres. I bet this thing can just drive straight up the side of a mountain. It's ridiculous. And you can see the terrain that it goes through. It's absolutely wild. I think that's enough playing for one day. I'm going to head back to the land because otherwise B will get worried and it's getting dark really soon anyway. It's been a beautiful sunset. It's gorgeous up here. I absolutely love it. Just no one about. Just me in the middle of nowhere. Beautiful forests. It's gorgeous. But right now, I jump back on the bike and, and head home. So time for a Gingy update. In the last video, uh, she was doing really well. Everything was on the mend. Unfortunately, since then, she finished her antibiotics, but the wound continued to get worse. She was still limping. There was a lot of pus buildup. It wasn't great. So we took her to the vets for a checkup and they were concerned. So they did an X-ray and they found that there was a pocket above the wound that looked like something could be going on in there and something was going on in there they had to do surgery the next day so she stayed at the vets and they discovered a grass seed lodged within the wound so they managed to get that out give it a good clean she's now obviously got stitches she's got a cone on she's not allowed out for probably well over a week because she's got eight days worth of antibiotics she needs her wound cleaning twice a day she's on pain medication as well and She's uh, she's getting a little bit fed up of staying inside now. I'm still staying in the van with her to make sure she's okay because she's struggling with the cone on in the van. I'm sure anyone watching this who lives in a small space with an animal that's had to wear a cone, or in fact anyone who lives anywhere with an animal that's had to wear a cone can understand the pain of living in a space with an animal with a cone on. It's just... Yeah, it's hard for the both of us. It's hard for the animal and hard for the owner, but she's doing well in regards to the surgery. She's come around really well from that. She's taking her medication like a champ. So fingers crossed, when she's finished this bout of medication and she's had a checkup at the vets, this is the end of Mysterious Wound Saga for Gingy Bear. I just jumped into the truck to go down to the well and our fan belt has come completely off the cog. It was gonna happen eventually and it had to happen now. <laughs> it was squeaking and a lot of you guys, I think, picked up on that and said it was the fan belt. So well done to you. We thought it may be that part of the issue. We still got the starter motor issue. We'll probably end up gonna rebuild this whole truck and learn so much about mechanics. I know a lot of you guys had a lot of fun about spark plugs in the diesel, but you have to start somewhere. We know nothing about mechanical stuff so especially in this truck when you live off grid you have to learn and that is exactly what we're doing throwing ourselves in at the deep end and we're going to fix everything ourselves but i'm going to have to take the tractor i'm going to push this out the way oh what a shame <laughs> the tractor i mean i needs could have walked there out. could i not well no not with 100 liters you can't that's true yeah i actually can't <laughs> walk there it's too far <laughs> so i'm going to take the tractor i'm not going to lie i feel like i'm on cool runnings right now <laughs> the start of the bobsleigh. Got this there, come on. Desire burns between them. One big push is gonna get you there. Takes a stronger eye to see them. And when you see it in front of you, in a silhouette.
is the highest that I've ever seen it. It's crazy. It's nearly overflowing and that's because this winter's been ridiculously rainy. Not so good for building, but it's good in a hot country when you can have access to water. And luckily our wells, they run all year round. We've got one well here and then we've got a spring over the other side of our land over there, not too far away. And it's just really good. When you're looking for land, you wanna make sure you have water, especially in Portugal. So the way we pump water from our well is a very simple method. We use a solar generator, means we don't have to lug a big petrol generator down here. It's also silent, which is nice. And we've got a cheap submergible pump that we brought off Amazon. Dead cheap, but does the job. Simple and effective. Pumps the water from the well to this thousand litre tank and then we fill up our tanks, our smaller tanks, and drive them up to the top. It might sound quite complicated, but we don't have to do this very often at all. I think the last time I filled up this tank was like over a month ago now. So we've been collecting rainwater further up the land on our cabin, which is really useful, and just trying to maximize the amount of water that we can harvest. And when our house is finished, we will be changing this system to a more technical and more expensive system, but it takes money and infrastructure to make sure that works perfectly. So when you turn on a tap in the house, it's almost pumping it straight from a tank that's been pumped here and we don't even have to think about it. It's just automatically done. So that's our goal for the future. But right now, we just got a hose pipe that goes straight out the well into the tank. And there we go, press the on switch, leave it for an hour and it's full. We've got a couple of different filters on the pump and on the pipes as well, so no frogs can get caught up and be sucked through a tiny little tube <laughs> and into our water source. There's so many frogs right now in the well, it's crazy. Shows that it's a nice environment to live in. Clean water. And we have had the water tested as well, and it's ultra clean, which is nice to know. So last time I was in the city, I picked up these two different hole saws. I got a 35 mil and a 32 mil. I thought that I could find a plug cutter or a hole saw the correct diameter, but I can't seem to find one in the store. They only do slightly too big or slightly too small. So I brought both and I'm hoping that between these two, I can make some nice chestnut plugs that fit in the holes that I made for the bolts of the mezzanine. Although I have got many plugs to make, I've got like 50 to do, which is pretty crazy. So if I do have to sand everyone, it's gonna be a time consuming process, but I'm sure it's gonna be worth it. <laughs> So it looks like I'm going to be spending the next hour under this hood. I had hoped to do the, the plugs tonight, but that's not going to happen because I really need to get this truck fixed. We use it every day. It's an absolute workhorse. We need it on hand always. So I'm going to try and fix this. But like I said, that's quite fun to me because I've never done any mechanics in my life. And with these trucks, they're really simple. You can see everything. It's usually just a couple of bolts for most things to pull out. Whereas with the Passat that we had before, everything's covered up. You have to unbolt tons of things just to see what you're working with. So this is really nice. There's no computers. It's very simple. And it's good for someone like me who's new to mechanics to fix it. I hope you've enjoyed this video and tune in on the next one where we continue building our dream home.